Hello, YouTubers. I am back. And I'm cooking, per usual. Because this is what I do when, I don't know. When life is like, I cook. This is how I function. So, today, I'm going to make, um, Philly cheesesteak baked potatoes. Um, if you can hear the music in the background, I hope you cannot. But if you can, I don't own the rights to the music playing in the background. It's for entertainment purposes only. While I cook, I have to have music while I cook. That's just how I vibe. Um, so Philly cheesesteak baked potatoes. So first things first, a while ago, earlier, I got some Idaho baking potatoes. And I poke holes them with, in them with a fork, uh, put avocado oil, just a little bit around them, a little salt, and wrap them in um, foil and put them in the oven so they're done. So that's the first thing you need is baking potatoes, large baking potatoes. So right now what I'm about to do is... I have onions here. I have butter in this pan here. That's what you hear crick, crackling and popping. I have onions that I'm going to cut up. I have a green pepper that I'm going to cut up. Um, I have the steak meat for the Philly steak part. Um, I have Philadelphia cream cheese, which I'm going to mix in with the mixture for the potatoes when I scoop them out. I'll tell you all. Um what I'm doing as I go. I also I also have uh, sour cream. That's going to go in the mixture. I also have I guess I should have had all of this out. So I also have the Philadelphia cream cheese uh, triple cheddar creamy melt cheese. That's going to go in the filling for the potatoes as well. So that's everything, um, except for the cheese that I want to pour on top, which, this is the cheese, Gordo's, that I want to use to pour on top, okay? So, let's get this popping. Um, right now, what I'm about to do is cut the onions and the pepper up and get them in the pan so I can go ahead and brown the Philly steak meat so I can start scooping the meat of the potatoes out of the inside while that cooks. The oven is on 375 because you do have to put the potatoes back in the oven to melt the cheese. Okay? Alright, so. I just have regular, like, I have sweet onions. I always buy sweet onions. I like sweet onions. So that's what I'm using. I have two of them. And I'm about to cut them up and throw them over into this, um, this butter that's in the pan. So how have you guys been doing? I had made you guys a um my bad. I had made you guys a jello shot video, but YouTube would upload the video. I'm gonna try to upload it again when I upload this video. I don't know why YouTube would let me it would it just wouldn't upload. I tried several times. It wouldn't do, so I gave up. I'm going to try again, though. Because I know I'm not the only mommy that be needing a cocktail, okay? So, I'm going to try to upload the, um, how to make jello shots video again. And I'm cutting these onions up really thin, because, you know, when you, when you get Philly cheesesteak, you know the onions are thinly cut, so... I'm not making them too thick. And I'm supposed to be chilling today because mommy has an ear infection, but mommy also has three children that have to eat whether she's sick or not, so. I'm cooking while my oldest two boys are out playing basketball and my baby boy is watching. He's, uh, well, he's playing video games right now, so. 
you're going to twist it to further your days. So this is a green pepper that I just had left over and I froze it. I don't know why I haven't thought it out. I probably won't, might not be able to use it. Because it's not thought out, but it is what it is. I'm going to try to use it. Just a little leftover something. I didn't want it to go bad, so I froze it because, you know, that's just something my grandma taught me. If you want it to keep longer, put it in a Ziploc bag and put it in the freezer, and that's what I do. Oh, that is cold as shit. I just knew what to you guys. And it's very cold, this um, pepper is. And of course, guys, don't forget to wash your hands before you get to doing all of this, okay? I know you guys didn't get to see me. Wash, I'll wash them again, look, and wash water just, just, just for the sake of people saying, Well, you didn't wash them on camera. I'm going to wash them again. But always wash your hands. Because you don't want your kids or your family to be sick. So, always wash your hands. But, um, I'm just going to slice this green bell pepper up into just little thin slices. And throw it in the pan. And just little, little tiny slithers. And I'm going to throw it in here with the onions. And I'm going to throw some seasoning onto the veggies as well. The onions and the green peppers. trying to cut through the frozen parts and for anybody that's wondering where I got this recipe from it's a TikTok recipe y'all know I am on TikTok all the time looking when I'm having my moments of boredom so it's a TikTok recipe And my oven's just, it's only on medium. I have a an electric oven, and it goes by numbers. So I just have it on, like, the five. It goes from low to high, which is low would be one, high would be ten. I got it on five, so I don't have it up very high while I strip these, make these uh, green peppers and strips. trying to hurry up because this mess is very cold. So what I'm, I did is just like I said cutting the slivers and now I'm just cutting the slivers in half. That's all I'm doing. Make them small. That's the best way to get kids to eat veggies. Cut them up small. My kids eat anything anyway because I start them off early eating all kinds of vegetables. But my little one is a finicky eater. So I try to make it easier for him to make it look appetizing. So trying to see what seasonings I'm going to. I think I'm going to put a little, for the seasonings, for the, the onions and peppers, a little of the Tony's Creole. Just a little sprinkle, not a lot. And Mrs. Dash Garlic and Herb. Just a little sprinkle of salt. Not much salt. I'm not going to put very much salt. 
Um, I have to. Also, I forgot to mention um, to go in the filling for the potatoes. You're gonna need chives as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that out while I'm thinking about it. And I always like to put par parsley when I'm sauteing onions because I just think it makes the onions taste that much more better, especially sweet onion. It just pulls the, I don't know, it just pulls the sweet out. And, excuse me, I have to sleep. <coughs> and, I want to put something else on. I just don't know what. I think I'm going to use this on the meat. So, okay, so lastly, I'm going to put some buttery garlic and herb by Kinder's onto the um, green peppers and onions. I just like all of my food to have flavor, you know, and my spice cabinet is like out of this world. Like me and my homegirl quite a while back were having like spice cabinet and um coffee cup tea mug cabinet challenges and she's always had way more tea mugs than me. But my spice game has always been like on point. My spice cabinet has always been like very thorough. Very, very thorough. So I'm just gonna let these can you guys let me push this back? I'm going to let here is the peppers and onions. I'm gonna let that just you know saute down until it's translucent. Onions and I don't want it to be too crunchy. Okay, so while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and get the potatoes ready and then switch back over to doing uh, steak. Mixing it in with the onions and peppers. Turn that around. So, I just wanted to let these potatoes cool off a little bit because they are hot. I had just pulled them out of the oven. When um, I turned the camera on. So, I'm trying to think of how I want to do this. I don't know if you guys can see the steam coming off the potatoes, but they are hot, and I am trying not to burn myself. They look good, though. I basically, you know, prep them and wrap them in the foil, rub, you know, poke holes in them, rub oil on it, a little bit of salt on the outside, rubbed it into the potato, massaged it into the, the potato really good. Wrapped it in full, and I went lay down, y'all. Like I went lay down while they cooked. It was very, a very low maintenance thing. This part. So this is like I just prepped it ahead of time, and, and then I got up, and you know my medicine had got good in me. So, but yeah, I'm all right though. Just a bit of an ear infection because these allergies that I have are like, my allergies are a beast, y'all. So, what the guy did in the video was he cut the tops off of the potatoes. And, here's the potatoes, y'all. He cut the tops off of the potatoes, scooped the filling out, and he put the filling into a bowl. And, oh, my battery's going dead. Oh, man. So he put the filling into a bowl and um, made a mixture out of it to scoop back in. 
side. So I'm going to pause this real quick, you guys, and get my charger because I don't want this video to stop. So, just one moment so. Okay, y'all, I'm back. So I got my charger. My computer's plugged up. I'm good on that front. Um, Mr. My veggies. And I'm going to turn them down a little while I get the potatoes ready. So like I was saying, he cut the tops off the potatoes, scooped out the filling and put it in the bowl. Made a real cute little mixture with it. Scooped it back in the top and shelled of the potato. And on and on like that, okay? So... So that's what I'm going to do. Let me. Well, got some plastic spoons here. I'm gonna use a regular piece of silverware, but I don't need to make an extra dishes when I can just. So I'm gonna just cut like a thin. Like piece of the top off, I'm not gonna go too deep and cut too deep down. Like I'm not gonna cut the potato in half or anything. Okay, so. Like this is the top that I cut off. Just a little thin strip. And I'm going to just lay it beside the potato. So I know what top goes to what potato. Okay? It's just as simple as that. So let's... And the potato is very soft. I, I let it bake for a good amount of time. So this little plastic spoon is just like scooping it out very easily. Don't scoop too much out. You want the shell to be able to, you know... Oh, the feeling when you put it back and just dump it like into dump it into the bowl. And I think I might go ahead and add my meat while I'm doing this. I'm trying my best to multitask so nothing is overcooked, overdone, underdone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is like how much of the potato I scooped out. You know, I love a good little thin layer. So let me add my meat while I'm thinking about it. And this meat here is like made for having Philly cheesesteak. So it literally just chops up itself. When you put it in the pan, it falls apart. So I don't have to like worry about chopping the steak or anything so i'm gonna just see how it just breaks apart easily like that it's little thin strips i'm gonna just lay it on top and i'm gonna put seasoning on it and then chop 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 um, i have two packs of this So let me get both packs. But I'm gonna wash my hands again before I start back pulling with these potatoes because I'm touching this raw meat. So you know, just if they're just little chopstick pieces, I think I dropped a piece. I'm gonna get it. So. Y'all excuse my old people noises that I make when I bend over. I am almost 40, so and this is I'm washing my hands, y'all. Wash this raw meat off my hands.
All right, so I'm going to put a little bit of salt on top of the meat so you guys can see that really good. So I have the Kinder's Table Blend. It's salt, pepper, and garlic. Let's turn it around. I thank you. Get it together. So I'm going to put a little bit of that on it. I don't know if you guys can see, like I'm grabbing it with my tongs and it's just falling apart. So, um, I want to use the Kinder's, a little bit of this brown sugar rub, not much, just a little bit. On top of the meat. And... I have the buttery buttery steakhouse because we are having steak. I'm going to put a little of, or maybe a lot because I like the buttery steakhouse. A generous amount of buttery steakhouse. And just a teeny, teeny, teeny little sprinkle of slap your mama because me and my kids like spicy shit. And, like, the heat's already getting, like, onto this, and it's, like, falling apart. I don't know if you can see when I grab it with the tongs, it, like, shreds apart. So, you know, that was a good investment. Let me turn the heat back up. I'm just flipping the steak over because I'm just, I want it all to be seasoned. Like, I want everything to be seasoned. So, we're going to repeat the same process for the other side of the steak. That was the brown sugar. It doesn't matter which order you go in. This is the buttery steakhouse. Slap your mama. The table blends. And you know what? I'm going to do last minute too, just a little bit of the Tony's Creole. Instead of adding extra salt, I'm just going to put a little bit of that on there. And that's good. I turned the heat back up to medium because I had turned it down to low while I was doing the potatoes. Well, I'm going to turn it up so the steak can cook, you know. And I'm going to finish doing my potatoes here. Potatoes are still hot, but they're cooling down. So, you know, it's a little ooch ouchy on my finger, but on my fingers, but it's all good. See? Just a little thin. I'm probably going to scoop that, that out, that wedge out. But just a little thin, something, something. So, you guys can hear my, my steak uh, sizzling over here. And I might put the link to that video, the TikTok video, I might put the link to it in the description box so you guys can see the difference between what he did and what I did. Only difference is he shortened his process down to 60 seconds so it can begin the TikTok video. And I'm just doing a step by step for people who really want to try it, you know? All right.
Y'all have a lot of potatoes here, y'all, because I did two potatoes for each one of my older boys. One potato for my baby. And one extra potato in case anybody else is still hungry. I'm just pulling the meat apart and moving everything around so it cooks evenly. Move it on to the next potato. I'm trying to speed this process up, you guys. I'm trying to have this number one. I'm trying to not make this video too long. We're at 26 minutes. I'm trying to not make this video too too long. And of course, when I put it in the oven to melt the cheese mixture for the inside, I'm gonna pause the video. But I got I'm trying to have it like together and ready before my kids get back. The inside of this potato had like little brown spots. I don't like the brown spots, so we have enough feeling that I can throw some of this away. I don't like when the potatoes have the brown spots. I probably just throw this whole one away. Yeah, I just throw this whole one away. I don't know. The outside of the potato is good. The inside has like some little brown spots. And I don't like that. I just threw it all the way. So the inside of the potato looks good. You see where the brown spots I scooped out were? It's all good. I'll keep the outside for just to have for a shell, but I scooped all the inside stuff in the trash. It is what it is. So let me turn my pan around. So I have four more potatoes to do. And my meat is still browning. It's, the meat on the top is still red. Making, um, I'm baking a whole chicken tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to make with the baked chicken, but I may do a video. Um, I may be a, do a video tomorrow. I don't know. I wanted to come on and do videos showing you guys our spring ba break vacation. Because the kids and I took two trips during spring break. 
but there was so much going on. I didn't even um I didn't even have time. I really didn't have time. I was trying to keep these children entertained and not have an old lady heart attack from all of the activity and I had my family members with me as well, like my my mom and sister and my nieces and nephews and I don't know what my deal is with the brown spots on the inside of potatoes. I just don't like them. I just don't like them. Okay, there's my knife. Let me give my steak a little, a little stir. But for spring break. The boys and I first took a trip to I'll turn the snow up a little bit higher so the heat can, can brown. The boys and I first went to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. We went up to the mountains. We got us we um got us a, a Airbnb at um a little ranch that we rented. It was very nice. There was a lot of land for my little ones to run around. And it was really cool. So we went to the Rainforest Zoo in Pigeon Forge. Uh, of course, we stopped by Books a Million because we don't have Books a Million where we live, and we like to we like to buy books. And Barnes and Noble just doesn't always cut it, you know. Sometimes you want to buy books from other places other than Barnes and Noble or ordering from Amazon online. So we found the Books a Million and spent quite a bit of money in Books a Million. Oh, we also visited a muscle car museum. Now, I actually might, I did take video at the muscle car museum. I might upload that video to the channel. For car lovers and enthusiasts like my son. Cause he was in he was in car muscle car heaven. That's a brown spot I'm gonna throw away. And y'all can choose not to throw the brown spots away, of, of course. I Like I said, I just don't like them. So I got two more. Two more potatoes to do. And then... I can move on to making the feeling. The feeling, not feeling. The feeling. these big old potatoes at Sam's Club though. They're pretty good size. I usually just get the little red, small red potatoes or small golden potatoes. But I found these at Sam's Club when I went shopping the other, yesterday. Quite a bit of filling in here, y'all. I don't even know if this is going to refill up all the potatoes. It looks like it's 
more meat than it looked like more meat than is really in the potatoes, but I mean, I guess it's going to add up properly, especially since I threw all of the meat away from that one potato, so. Okay, last potato. And I turned the, turned the heat up on that meat, and it is cooking finally at a pace that I wanted to cook at because I'm trying to get this, trying to get this crack a leg. Trying to get this in motion here. Oh, these potatoes are still pretty hot. I don't even know if y'all can see it steaming from here, but it's steaming in my hand. Woo! Burn it! Okay, that's the last potato. Okay. Here's all my shelled potatoes. Put that to the back. And I'm still trying to just let this brown real good. It's most of most of the way there. It's most of the way brown. I just want to make sure you know it's good and cooked. Don't nobody gonna be bothered with no raw meat. All right, so next I got. The Philadelphia cheese, cream cheese, cheese cream, cream cheese, and I bought it from the store today, and I just left it out when I came home, so it would be really soft, so like, look, it's super, super soft, and that's going to go into the potato filling mixture. I'm only going to put half of it in there. sour cream and I always buy the squeeze sour cream because I'm modern you know it's new I'm I'm a modern day mom and I do anything I can to make my life easier so um this is about how much sour cream I put you guys I don't know how much that adds up to I kind of measure till stuff looks like that's how I that's how I do Okay, so the chives, I'm going to put a generous amount of chives because baked potatoes and chives go together, you know, and the um, creamy milk, it's funny, the <laughs> creamy milk uh, triple cheddar cheese has um, bacon and cheese stuffed potato recipe on the back, and that's what I'm making. I have to get, um... I have to get a real spoon to stir this with because that little plastic spoon is going to break. It is definitely going to break. So, I'm going to stir this and then I'm going to add the cheese. Oh, also, I'm losing my mind. I'm also going to add a little bit of salt. I know that looks like a lot, but I have this tiny salt shaker, so a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and I'm 
I'm going to add um, onion powder. Just a little bit of onion powder, not much. My adobo is, is, is like going crazy over here. I'm going to add garlic powder. That was all I had left, y'all, so... Put the adobo back. And where is it? Oh, and some of this garlic and herb. And that was just a little bit I had left uh, in there too, so. Let me mix this cream cheese in here while these potatoes are still hot. I need more sour cream cheese. I can sneeze. <sighs> it won't come. If you ain't sneezing, it ain't enough sneezing. I'm putting more sour cream, you guys. Because this is not thinking, it's not enough. And I'm going to add half of this cheese to begin with. And I'm just going to mix this all in. Mix. Do something about my meat because it's going crazy over here. Okay, my meat is done. So I'm going to turn off my heat for my meat. This is what my meat's looking like, you guys. It is completely brown. Onions are translucent. Green peppers are soft. So I'm going to remove that from the heat. That's good. Now, let me mix in this first half of this cheese. I got sour cream all over my hand. <laughs> all right, go ahead and uh, put the rest of the pack of cheese in there. Let's throw this away. This is what it's looking like, you guys. So I'm still mixing it up. I'm just going to slide this over on top of the pot. So. Just give this, like, this is hard to stir, you guys, because that cream cheese and that sour cream basically cooled the inside, the potato insides up, like it cooled it down. But um, like it's all good. So now, that's your mixture. Boom. Put mixture inside of. Empty shell potatoes. That's the next step. Gosh, I'm at 43 minutes. But it is what it is, y'all. It's cooking, so. I mean, I, there's no way I could cook all of this and explain it step by step in 20 minutes. This is not a TikTok video. This is Apache Dreamer Chronicles. So, fill it up. Just fill it up just like a normal even level and then go back and pack down what you have left. That's what I'm going to do. I had no idea that somebody remade TLC waterfalls. Why would they do that? TLC done it just fine the first the first time. Anyhow, learn something new every day. YouTube.
people are always messing with somebody else's song and shit. So like I said, this is like way a lot more filling. Of course, because we added stuff to it. So these are going to be piled super, super high by the time I finish. Whoever this is, is that no business messing with TLC song, y'all. I'm kind of upset about this. He need a phantom slap, whoever this guy is that did this. Okay, so this is the potatoes with just the even layer of filling. And this is how much filling I have left. So I'm just going to like make that, pile, pile that on top and make it like a mound of filling on each one. Make it real good. Everybody gets a real good share here, you know. I'm trying. I only got a little bit of a feeling left, so I think I'm not doing too bad. All right, boom, I made it work. That's all go. It is all gone. All right, so next, next step. So the next step is put the. Oh, y'all can't see me. Anyhow, put the steak on top of the potatoes. Um, I'm just trying to spread them out, y'all. Put the steak on top of the potatoes. Out on top. Um, put the tops on the potatoes and put them in the oven. Let the cheese melt. And then um, when you pull it out of the oven, see it's just. Ooh. But this is how he did it on the video. So it was like overflowing like this on the video. So it's all good. Just make sure you have room. For the overflow part on your pan that you're using. I'm just like trying to get it to fit on here, y'all. I kind of just want to push all the potatoes together. And, um, like just pile over the top, and I think that's what I might do. That looks like a better plan. 
Just, just pile it on there. I dropped the piece on the floor. Oops. I am making a mess. Alright, so. Because I want all my steak. I want all my steak on there. So it is what it is, you guys. Throwing this away. Alright, so. Y'all see how I got that piled on there, right? I am not sprinkling any shredded cheese on top because when we pull this out, we're going to pour the melted cheese on top. So, I am put this in the oven. The oven is on 375. Not going to take long for that to melt, for that cheese to melt. So, um, I'm going to pause it and I'll be back when it's done. Okay, y'all? All right, you guys, I'm back. So, um, I've had the potatoes in the oven for like five minutes, I guess, now. And the cheese is pretty melted, so I'm going to take it out and pour the nacho cheese. Oh, my glass is falling up. Over the potato. So, yeah, this is what it looks like. And so I got my Gordo's white queso. And I am just going to pour it over the top of the steak all around. And I don't know if you guys can see, but like I'm getting the tops of the the little potato tops. I'm pouring cheese on the potato tops too, so Do y'all see all that cheesy goodness? Oh, me and my kids are probably going to be in the bathroom, but it's all right. They're fed. So, let me move you guys a little closer so you can see. This is the finished product. This is TikTok Philly Cheesesteak Baked Potato. Thank you guys for staying with me. For the duration of this video, I highly appreciate it. I will be back with more family stuff, more cooking, more Apache, all that goodness, okay? Peace and blessings to all of you. Have a good weekend.